Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra with Miss Betsy. Today we're continuing our discussion of geometry by defining some polygons which are multi-sided figures and learning how it is that we calculate the sum of the angles, of the degrees of the angles within those specific polygons. But before we get started, I've got a joke that I want, a question joke that I want to read to you, and this is for all of my English friends out there. Not directly relevant to math, but I think it's a great one. What's the difference between a cat and a comma? Well, one has the pause before the clause. There's the cat paw and the clause. One has the pause before the clause, and the other has the clause before the pause. So. Ms. Garrett, I hope you see that. Perhaps Ms. R Ms. Riley, you can use that as a lame joke in your English classes. So, we'll go ahead and continue, get started on our lecture here. By the way, we are in Pre-Algebra for Christian Schools, published by Bob Jones University Press. And I use the first edition. This is section 11.6, and we are on, if I can find the right page, we are on page 370, and what we see, let me read this definition directly from your book, it tells us that a closed plane figure made up of line segments is called a polygon. It's closed means, means that you have to have the line, you have to be able to trace a continuous path around the outside of this figure. That right there is not an open plane figure. It's just a collection of lines or, or the path of an ant who ran out of steam before he could get back home. Or if somebody found the ant and stomped on him. And we have knowledge from the past that you can name a polygon based on the number of sides that it has. A three-sided figure here, try, is a triangle, which of course you already knew. This four-sided figure that we have here, don't automatically say that it's a square. A square has to have equal sides, which now it has equal sides, and it has to have equal right angles, equal angles. So there, when I put these little indicator marks here, telling me that we have four right angles, and four equal sides, <clears throat> this is, first off, it's a quadrilateral, lots of you ride quads, uh, quad is a four-wheeler, quadrilateral has four sides, when the sides are the same and the angles are the same, we call that specific quadrilateral is called a square. Now we have a pentagon. A pentagon has how many sides? Penta is five. So a pentagon is a five-sided object. A hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a six-sided object. We also have an octagon, which is eight sides. And what is our most easily recognizable eight-sided figure? Well, if you live in the United States, that's going to be a, tri uh, a triangle. It's going to be a stop sign. But this is not exactly what a stop sign looks like because these sides aren't all the same length, are they? An octagon has eight, is an eight-sided, a regular octagon or a stop sign is an eight-sided figure where all eight of those sides are exactly the same length. The angles are the same. Let me go ahead and mark this pentagon a little bit more. What do you think I'm showing here as I do those hashes and those little arcs? What I'm showing you is that I have five equal length sides and I have five equal angles. So, when you have an object 
when you have a polygon that has equal sides and equal angles, we have a specific name for that and we say that that particular polygon is regular. Regular triangle, regular quadrilateral, regular hexagon, when it's used in a geometric concept context, that tells us that the sides and the angles are all identical. But you can't tell that just by looking at the sketch. They're going to indicate with hash marks indicating which sides are the same length. They're going to indicate right here that the angles are the same. So which of these are regular? This is not a regular triangle. This is a regular quadrilateral, which is a square. This is a regular pentagon because all of the sides and all of the angles are the same. Then we have an octagon. It's not regular because the sides are not the same length. Likewise, this pentagon, this, I'm sorry, this hexagon, six sides, that's not a regular hexagon either because the sides and angles are differing lengths. Now the next part, that what we're going to do, well, first let's, if you would look at example one in your book, what they have, which I can't sketch, I'm just sorry, they have a six-sided object, and they drew it, they've printed it in your book, so that all of those six sides are equal. roughly like this, and they want you to name that. So if the six sides are equal, we can say that it is regular because the sides are regular. I can't spell this morning either. This is regular. The sides are equal. And how many sides does this have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have here a regular hexagon. And then the other object that they sketched for you looks something like this. Just a random four-sided object. The sides aren't the same length, the angles are not the same. This is simply called a quadrilateral. Once again, this chapter is all about vocabulary. You have to learn the new words if you don't already know them, and be able to identify objects and geometric figures based on their shape. Now there's something that is very interesting. We learned in our last section that the sum of the angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. So we can figure out how many angles, the sum of the measure of the angles of, of A, whatever these things are called, of a polygon by figuring out how many triangles there are if you connect opposite vertices to so that you divide that polygon into a number of triangles. So how many triangles do you divide a square into, a quadrilateral into? two triangles, and there are 180 degrees in each triangle, aren't there? So quadrilateral then, there would be 360 degrees in a quadrilateral. In a hexagon, divides it up into three triangles, 180, 180, 180, and yet again, 
180. That's twice 360. So you have 720 degrees in a hexagon. It has nothing to do with whether or not these polygons are regular or not. It just has to do with how many triangles that are in there. So let's think. Hmm. What if I had... Uh, I'm not even going to go that far. There's a pattern here. How many sides? Four sides. How many triangles? Two triangles. How many sides here? Six sides. How many triangles? There are four triangles. Let me draw one more polygon down here. Some of you already see where I'm going with this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that didn't work. Seven. So I have one triangle, two triangles, three triangles, four, five. This is just a random seven-sided polygon. One, two, three, four, five triangles. Seven sides, five triangles. What relationship do you see here? Let me say 180. That would be 940. That would be 900 degrees. Would be the total measure, the sum of the total measure of all of the angles inside the seven-sided polygon. So what relationship are you seeing here that I'm, that I'm wanting you to catch? Four sides, two triangles. Six sides, four triangles. Seven sides, five triangles. The number of triangles in a polygon is always going to be two less than the sum of the sides. So if you have an eight-sided polygon, minus two, there are going to be six triangles in there. How many degrees are there in a triangle? 180. So 6 times 180 is going to give you the total measure of all of the angles contained in an octagon. And that little formula shows up in your homework section. Let me, um, let me pull it for you. It says a formula for the sum of the measures of the angles of a polygon. So the sum of the measure of the angles of a polygon, S is equal to N minus 2 times 180. So what do we have? S is the sum of the measure of the angles and N is the number of sides in the polygon. So if you have a 10-sided figure, 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 times 180 is going to give you the total number of degrees in that polygon. One more example, one more little thing that I want to pull from page 372. This tells us that when you know the sum of the measures of the angle measures in a polygon, you can write and solve an equation to find the measure of the missing angle. 
we have just a random four-sided object. Because it has four sides, it's going to be called a quadrilateral. So we have vertex A, B, C, and D. Eighty degrees, fifty five degrees, one hundred twenty degrees. How are we going to find out what the measure of angle A is? X plus eighty plus fifty five plus one twenty is equal to 360. Now, how in the world did I come up with that? Well, what I know is because I have a four-sided figure, that the total number of degrees in that figure is 4 minus 2 times 180, 2 times 180, or 360. And we could actually I draw a line from here to here. Divide our quadrilateral into two triangles. So two triangles of 180 degrees each tells us that the sum of all of those angles in there has to be 360. We need to find out what this is. So this unknown angle plus the measure of this plus this plus this is going to be equal to 360. Now we just solve that as a basic pre-algebra statement. 80 and 120 is 200, 255. X plus 255 is equal to 360. X is equal to 105, if I am doing my math correct this morning. So, the measure of angle A is equal to 105 degrees. We solved just the basic algebra, pre-algebra statement here, but this is what you need to have your answer look like because it asks you to find the measure of an angle. The measure of an angle is always given in degrees. So that's the conclusion of 11.6 and I'll see you next time.